All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about taking the derivative of exponential functions. And exponential functions are the inverse functions of logarithmic functions. And so recall that the natural log function is the log function with the base of e, where that e is Euler's number, which is another special irrational number like pi that shows up a lot in mathematics. And so what it means for the natural log to be a log of base e is that the natural log of e is equal to one, right? That's the same as having log base e of e is equal to one. Since the log is a base of e and we're plugging that same value of e into that function, it's going to be equal to one. Right, just like log base 10 of 10 is equal to one, log base e of e is equal to one as well. And so the reason that this is important is let's say we wanted to find the exponential function that is the inverse function of the natural log function, right? So if we have f of x is equal to the natural log of x, what would be that inverse function, f inverse of x, such that the inverse function plugged into the original function would be equal to x, right? This is the definition of an inverse function. If we plug that inverse function into the original function, it should undo that function and just leave us with x. And that would be true for the opposite direction as well, if we plug the original function into the inverse function. And so for the inverse function of the natural log, let's consider that number e to the power of x right, this would be an exponential function because our variable x is in the exponent of this value, right? And so if we consider this function as the inverse of the natural log function, then let's see if this statement holds true. Remember that the original function, f of x, is the natural log of x, so we will have the natural log of the inverse function, and we're going to see if that inverse function is e to the power of x. And so we'll have that this is equal to the natural log of e to the x, if we plug that exponential function in for that inverse function. And then if we use one of the properties we know about the natural log function, that the natural log of a to the power of n is equal to n times the natural log of a, we can move this exponent of x to the outside, right? In this case, e is a and x is n. And so we can take that power of n, or in this case, x, and bring it out to the outside to have n times the natural log of a or in this case, x times the natural log of e. And so this will be equal to x times the natural log of e. And remember what we said at the beginning, the natural log of e is equal to one. And so this is equal to x times one, which is just equal to x. And so this checks out. We have just shown that the inverse function of the natural log function is e to the x, this exponential function. And so similarly, you would find that e to the power of the natural log of x is also equal to x, right? So we just reversed this process. Instead of plugging the inverse into the original function, we plugged the original function, the natural log of x, into our inverse. And so we replaced x with the natural log. And so we have e to the natural log of x, and that would also be equal to x. And so e to the power of x is the inverse function of the natural log function. And so now to finally get to the topic of this video, how would we take the derivative of this exponential function e to the power of x? Well, in order to figure that out, we are going to look at this equation over here where we have that the natural log of e to the power of x is equal to x. And so here we have this equation. What we're going to do is take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation here. And so if we're gonna take the derivative of the natural log of e to the power of x, remember that the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of u is equal to one divided by u times u prime, or the derivative of u with respect to x. And so if we use that in this scenario, we will have one divided by what is inside the natural log function, right? e to the x would be that u. And so we have e to the power of x, and that will be multiplied by the derivative of that inside function. And so now we don't know what that is, and so I'm just going to write it like this. We'll have d dx of e to the power of x, right? This represents the derivative of that function. And this will be equal to the derivative of x, which is just one, because the derivative of x to the first power is just equal to its coefficient, which in this case is one. And so now we wanna solve for this right here. We wanna know what the derivative of e to the power of x is. And so if we multiply both sides 
by e to the power of x to eliminate this right here, right? If we multiply e to the power of x to this side and to this side, these will cancel out and we will just be left with that the derivative with respect to x of e to the power of x is equal to e to the x. And so we have a very interesting result here, but this is the derivative of that exponential function e to the power of x. The derivative is itself. And so now that we have this derivative rule for that function, let's take a look at some examples where we will use this derivative rule. Okay, so here we have that rule that we just found that the derivative of e to the power of x is equal to e to the power of x, but that's also applicable in a scenario where we have e to the power of some other function, u, where u is defined with x. And that would be equal to e to that power of u times the derivative of that function u, right? So this is the basic form of the derivative, and then this is the chain rule version of that same derivative. So if you have a function other than x in your exponent of e, then this is what you will use. And so let's look at this first example here. We have the derivative with respect to x of three times e to the power of x. And so in this case, we can just pull out that constant multiple, and this will be equal to three times the derivative d dx of e to the power of x, which we know is just e to the x. And so this is equal to three times e to the power of x. And so that is the derivative of this function. It's the exact same function, but it is the derivative of that function. And so let's look at a different example here. What if we wanted to know the derivative d dx of e to the power of 2x, right? Instead of having e to the power of just x, we now have a different function where we have e to the power of 2x, and so we're going to need to use this chain rule version of that derivative rule. And so u in this case would be 2x and so let's go through with this rule here. This will be equal to e to the power of u. So we're just gonna have e to the power of 2x, right? So we'll have e to the power of 2x. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of u, or in this case, the derivative of 2x. And the derivative of 2x is just two, right? The derivative of x to the first power is just equal to the coefficient of that term. And so it's just equal to two. And so we can simplify, and our derivative here will be 2 times e to the power of 2x. That is the derivative of this exponential function. Okay, let's look at some more examples. All right, so here we have the derivative of e to the power of x cubed plus x plus 1. So in this case, we have e to the power of a whole polynomial. And so this is going to require the chain rule. And so we'll first have that this is equal to e to the power of x cubed plus x plus one, right? The first step of taking a derivative of an exponential function like this is just to rewrite the function and then multiply by the derivative of what is in the exponent. And so we're going to have to take the derivative of x cubed plus x plus one. And so we'll start with the x cubed term. That will be three x squared if we use the power rule Right, we multiply the exponent down, so we have three times x to the power of three minus one, right? We subtract one from the exponent, and so we're left with two. And then we will add the derivative of x, which the derivative of x is one, and then we'll take the derivative of one, which is just zero, because the derivative of any constant like one is zero. And so this is the derivative of this function, but I'm just gonna reorder it to write it in a nicer way. So we'll have that this is equal to three x squared plus one times e to the power of x cubed plus x plus one. And so this is my final answer or the derivative of this function. Next, we have the function y equals x times e to the power of x, and we wanna find the derivative y prime. And so for this function, we are going to need to use the product rule because we have two functions being multiplied together, right? We have the function x and the function e to the power of x. And so if you don't remember the product rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to reference. But if we use it, y prime will be equal to our first function, x, times the derivative of our second function, which the derivative of e to the x is just e to the power of x. So we have e to the x. And then we will add that second function. So we will have e to the power of x again, times the derivative of our first function, which the derivative of x is one. And so if we simplify, y prime will be equal to x times e to the power of x plus e to the power of x. And so then since both of these terms have e to the power of x in them, we can pull that out and we'll have that this is equal to e to the power of x times x plus one, right? If we pulled out of this term, we'll just be left with x. And so that's where this x comes from. 
and if we pull e to the power of x out of this term, we'll just be left with one. And so this is the derivative of this function. All right, so next we have the function f of x is equal to the natural log of one plus e to the power of three times x. And we wanna find f prime of x, or the first derivative of this function. And so in order to find the derivative of this function, we are going to need to use the chain rule because we have a composite function, not only right here with e to the power of three x, but also right here, right? We have one plus e to the power of three x inside this natural log function. And so our outside function here is the natural log function, and the inside function is this one plus e to the power of three x. And so to find f prime of x, we will start by taking the derivative of the outside function. And so we'll be taking the derivative of the natural log function. And remember that when you take the derivative of a natural log function, you just take that inside function and you put it under one. So we have one divided by one plus e to the power of three x. And that will be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. And so the derivative of one is zero because one is a constant but then the derivative of e to the power of three x, we will first start by rewriting that function, right? The derivative of an exponential function e to the power of some other function is that function. So we will rewrite it e to the power of three x, and then we need to multiply by the derivative of that power. And so the derivative of three x is just three because x is to the first power. And so the derivative of that would just be the coefficient. And so that is our derivative of the inside function. And so now if we simplify this, we will have our final answer that f prime of x is equal to three times e to the power of three x divided by one plus e to the power of three x. And so that is the derivative of f of x. Next we have y equals e to the power of x minus e to the negative x power divided by four. And we wanna find dy dx or the derivative of this function. And so let's start by rewriting this function. I'm gonna pull this one fourth to the outside of these two terms. And so what I mean is we're gonna have that y is equal to one fourth times e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x, right? This is still the same as this function right here. And so then if we wanna find the derivative dy dx, that will be equal to that constant one fourth times the derivative of these two terms. And so the derivative of e to the power of x is just e to the power of x. And then we will subtract the derivative of e to the power of negative x. And so we'll start by rewriting this function. And so we will have e to the power of negative x, but then we need to multiply by the derivative of that function in the exponent, right? Since it's not just x, we need to multiply by the derivative of it. And just a quick note, we could do that for this as well, but Note that the derivative of x is just one, and so you'd be multiplying by one, which doesn't change anything. And so that's why when it's just e to the power of x, we can just rewrite it and then move on. But when we have any other function, including negative x in the exponent of e, then we need to multiply by its derivative. And so the derivative of negative x is just negative one, right? That's the coefficient of this term where x is to the first power. And so that was the derivative of both of those terms. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to one fourth times e to the power of x. And then these two negatives will become positive. And so we will have plus e to the power of negative x. All right, and so then we have one more thing we can do. We can change this negative exponent to be positive by moving this value into the denominator. And so what I mean is we'll have that this is equal to one fourth times e to the power of x plus one divided by e to the power of x and that will be our final answer, right? We just moved this term to the denominator, and so now that negative exponent is a positive exponent, okay? This is the derivative of this function. Let's look at one more final example for this video. All right, so we have that g of x is equal to e to the power of x minus one divided by e to the power of x plus one, and we wanna find g prime of x, or the derivative of this function. And so in order to find the derivative of g of x, we are going to need the quotient rule because we have a quotient of two functions, right? We have e to the power of x minus one in the numerator, and we have e to the power of x plus one in the denominator. And so if you don't remember the quotient rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to reference as we go through this derivative. But if we use that quotient rule, we will have that g prime of x is equal to the bottom function or the denominator function, e to the power of x plus one times the derivative of the numerator function. And so the derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. 
and then the derivative of negative one is zero because it's a constant, and so we don't need to write that. And then we will subtract the numerator or top function, so we will have e to the power of x minus one times the derivative of the denominator or the bottom function. And so the derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x, and the derivative of one is zero because one is a constant. And so then we will divide all of this by the denominator or bottom function squared. And so we will have e to the power of x plus one squared. Okay, and so to simplify this a little bit, let's distribute this e to the x through this quantity and this e to the x through this quantity. And so this will be equal to e to the power of x times e to the power of x. And so when we multiply these two terms together, do not write e to the power of x squared. That is incorrect. Remember that when you multiply two terms with an exponent that have the same base, you add the exponents, not multiply them, right? If you have x to the power of five times x to the power of two, that is equal to x to the power of seven, right? We don't multiply five and two to get 10, we add five and two to get seven. And so in this case, we're going to add x and x. And so instead of having x squared here, we will have two x, okay? So just be careful when you multiply e to the power of x times itself, it's not e to the power of x squared, it is e to the power of two x. Okay, and so then we'll multiply e to the power of x times one, and so we will have plus e to the power of x, and then we will subtract e to the x times e to the x, once again, that's gonna be e to the power of two x, and then we will have negative one times e to the x, and so we will have minus e to the power of x. And that will still be divided by the same denominator, of e to the power of x plus one squared. All right, and so if we clean up our work here, we can distribute this negative to these two terms, and so that would make this term negative and this term positive because these two negatives would become positive, and so I'm just going to erase these parentheses and then make this a plus sign. All right, and so then we can see that we have a negative e to the power of two x and a positive e to the power of two x, and so those are going to cancel out. They're just gonna become zero, and then we have two e to the power of x's, and so g prime will be equal to two times e to the power of x divided by e to the power of x plus one quantity squared. And this is the derivative of g of x. This is g prime of x, or the derivative of that function. All right, and so with that, that is all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see even more examples, I'll have an examples video linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.